brings me to the last question, and this is a question. I am sorry, I can't take questions from the audience because समय नहीं है उतना. लेकिन आपने जो भी questions भेजे, 200 से ऊपर questions से, and I tell you that I faithfully went through each one of them, and I have combined them into subjects. And this is the last question that I want to ask before I would ask Dada to talk about the way forward. And this is something that I need all three uh, of the guests to speak about. It is basically. we are saying what can a and this is a question asked by many of you what can a common hindu or a common citizen do to at least slow down and to stop the damage to some extent that is happening to hindus and to civilizational cause is there a practical action plan that we can adopt and how do we win this civilization battle in the long run when we know that demography is destiny do you have an action plan that would be wonderful to know if you have no definitely definitely there's an action plan but i'll i'll tell you the the amazing disconnect as and dada has really put the finger on the pulse you know and, the, and it's i'm amazed dada are you, are you an independent were you an independent mlu from from, <laughs> from <laughs> aaj tak kabhi kisi congress mp ne itna kabhi kiya hoga criticize government ko this is the difference please remember this and reelect him and i'm also removing my nota thing and i'm uh, if i can but i'll tell you the disconnect and this is why size when he says that when people come to power what happens i will ask you a question and please raise your hands and then i vouch for it that not a single bjp politician will ever raise the hand on this question the question is does terrorism have religion yes. name one bjp minister leave minister karyakarta who will say openly that terrorism is wo ulta are hum to bata rahe hain aapko navika ji rahul ji terrorism ka religion hai hi nahi aur yahan log data pe data collect kiye ja rahe hain pagalon ki tarah ki 31000 terror attacks hue hain based on islamic principles is 911 and you are saying terrorism is no religion but to come back to your question which was can hindus do something i think the government has to do hindus have elected it but i have changed my view there is a little bit of this anarchic keeda that has gone into me ever since supreme court said on farm bills ki bhai wo kahan hai jo ki pro farm bills hain wo to hame dikh nahi rahe basically they wanted 86% of indian farmers to come out to the streets not till the land and produce farm produce but they wanted those 86% farmers to come on to the supreme our supreme court and say look we want these farm laws this is what our country has been reduced to by the judiciary ki those who are doing their work in far flung areas around india who are creating wealth who are making produce they have to leave all this and supreme court wants because it wants to see it only sees the anti farm bills it wants to see the pro farm bill protesters so they have to come but if be that as it may i think hindus must come on to the streets then use the supreme court's brahmastra and say hindu temples must be under the control of hindus <laughs> that is the first thing and i i don't want to scare you with data because most one of the most authoritative guys the other is our mutual friend tr ramesh no one has worked more on this than these two gentlemen lakhs not even lakh lakhs of crores of money that is legitimately hindu is being lost is being gained by the government because the temples and their land is in the control of the government the government is dictating how and preventing hindus from running their own colleges their institutions their vidya peeths everything that other religions are doing at breakneck speed in health in education in every providing every amenity down to as he said making lawyers and judges who knows maybe army people but hindus are being prevented what are hindus going to do for the last 5 6 7 8 years people like sai and others have been crying look government has no business to control hindu temples what has happened this government your government bjp government has controlled even more temples in the last 8 years than the congress had if it wants it can overturn the uh, na, overturning of the 1959 supreme court judgment that congress overturned bjp can overturn that overturn i'm sorry i'm getting a bit uh, 
uh, what's the word for it, inception here. But the, the whole point is, what are the Hindus going to do? They voted this government. This government is a Hindutva government. But I don't want because all of you are earning, doing money, creating wealth that anyway this government is taxing to run. What can be worse than that? So, uh, of course, Chef, there are issues that Hindus can tackle. But I don't, I think this seed of anarchism, unless it gets into the Hindus, which is, would be a tragedy, I don't think the Hindus' issues can ever be solved. I think there's a simpler way forward. Don't release our temples. Declare yourself a Hindu state. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. That's it. You choose what you want to do. Paisa chahiye, to parichai ko badlo. That's it. Otherwise, I don't see the point in filling your coffers. This is not a facetious statement. I'm making this very, very seriously. Because then we will have to confront the absolute worst of values inherited from the West, secularism. Then you'll have to confront that. And you'll have to call out the BS it is. And then you'll start talking about a lot of things. Now that's one. But what is it that we can do as Hindus? One, don't leave Bharat for California. Please. Kindly, please. Gaon chhod diye, sheher chhod diya, Bharat chhod diya. Toh bacha kya kis ke liye lade, mertko samaj me nahi aate. Vahaan se kya you will want to form a diaspora fighting for a country which has vacated the country? Kindly, please stay in Bharat. This is the way of the future. Shakti has travelled everywhere and has come back to Asia. It has finished its journey in the rest of the world. The history of the world is a movement of energy. Energy is finally coming back to its source. Kindly stay. If you're looking for perhaps being a part of the most interesting, exciting generation, notwithstanding the troubles and challenges ahead, this is the place to be. Bharat is the battleground and Bharat is the way of the future. I'm not saying this for any other reason. Shiv Lingkong ka apne aap bahar aana, apne aap mein kuch sanket hai, if you're a believer. <laughs> Idols which have been, I'm a hardcore believer. I, I, I hope that doesn't offend you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. Hardcore believer. Itne saari murtiyan jo 400 saal, 500 saal dabe padhe thai, wo bahar nikal rahe. The explosion of interest in Bharatiya Sanskriti is tremendous. The voices that are being produced. I am a low-grade hustler. Ignore me. Look at the number of Shastraic voices coming out, trying to protect traditions who don't get the kind of space and the social media position advantage that we get. So, these are signs. And Dharma believes in cosmic signs. I cannot ignore that. Three, Sanskriti ko bachane se pehle, pehle, parivar ko bachaiye, jo apke bachche hain, jo wok ban rahe hain, unko pakdiye. <laughs> because the motto of the left is, you have power, we have your children. And they are investing in the future heavily. The rubbish from the United States has been refused by France, but India still doesn't have the guts to refuse it. I will never subscribe to gender-specific binary, non-binary pronouns in my life. I will never do this. This is internet karma. I'm saying this. I will never redact this particular position. As a Sanskriti that has dedicated temples for transgenders, which has celebrated in, in its own way. I don't need to learn your refuse. One, you don't need to teach us how to treat these people. They are our people. <laughs> the worst of terms which are used to address them don't come from Hindi, they come from Urdu. Therefore, we have our own ways of, let's say, looking after our people. Three, 
at least at home have a three tier system wherein the matrubhasha finds some space please do i will tell you the extent of my own coloniality how seeped we are in english two days ago when i was actually trying to buy something on amazon for some weird reason it switched to hindi it was such a clutter and irritating clutter in my head and i said what on earth is this an indian language is a clutter in your head and a language that you are comfortable speaking in and a language that you are comfortable conversing in because you see speech is okay but reading is important because then you won't forget the script now you will remember you will read how many can write now in mother tongues thank you i am so grateful are <laughs> <laughs> and force your native press to not simply translate english words in marathi or hindi computer ko computer mat bolna i'll tell you why i'm so proud of tamil language shavanism i'll say this let me just answer this question and and i hope i don't offend sentiments here if i do that's okay the point is the point is the dravidians the dravidianists see tamil brahmins as aryans and we are castigated left right and center whereas all the prime literature has come from the tamil brahmanas subramanya bharati who they worship is my distant relative he is actually the damad of my family and these are all he was a cherut smoking tamil brahmin so if you go to nepal they have traditions where they castigate rama because ladki ko diya dekho kya kar diya in bihar and other places they won't give people their daughters in marriage to people coming from uttar pradesh and koshal there are certain traditions there because they carry the memory similarly we say this about subramanya bharati dekho hamare ladki ke sath kya kar diya because the man never earned he was a thinker cigar smoking thinker at home okay now the point is retain your mother tongues there is a reason why you have ishta dev as a concept you owe your duty to three sets of devatas your kula devata because that protects your collective identity as a group and the traditions that go with it your grama devata which is your guardian deity your ishta devata you choose according to your nature that's exactly why dharma offers you this 100 108 baskets choose what you want or mix and match and choose a deity according to that and once you have chosen or subscribed to that please make sure that at least once a week you dedicate in some form to that particular deity because all the stock is useless because you have to match the other guy in his commitment to his deity and that is something you must learn from them no matter what it's not wrong he is wrong because his point of view is against us and he has positioned himself as matter and anti matter but our commitment is where we are fundamentally let's say it's a it's a shaky wicket so in a previous talk somewhere i said this the principle is what i'd call the sip principle spiritually fit intellectually fit and certainly get physically fit make one trip to israel and you'll realize not one gentleman i saw there had a punch once i came back i realized kuch na kuch to karna padega i can't go like this so each of these components are important because it makes a difference one of the reasons that guru gobind singh specifically had physical attributes for the khalsa especially the beard is to invite and in invoke fear the kada was a sign of metal and kshatra they still call the 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 weapon the art of learning weapons in their own corrupted form shastra vidya it's nothing but shastra vidya so my suggestions would be the following hinduism as ravi ji said unlike islam is rooted to a particular bhumi which is why you pray as you worship to the bhumi as well it's a consecration that happens with every ritual so protect and stay this is your land others can leave because it's not their motherland this is our mata you can't leave <laughs> to protect your children your language and we don't have the voluntary concept of zakat fortunately so 
to any organization that does service for dharma in some way. <laughs> Hindu hai to bandhu hai is the bottom line. Thank you. Dada, I you will, can, I, I'll sum up now. You yes. can give the last, uh, your, your remarks and the way forward from okay, the podium. Sure. Yes. Uh, this has been a very, very uh, interesting session to moderate and thanks so much Anand, Sai and Dada for giving your valuable time and thanks. amazing insights. I'm going to end with uh, something that I heard from Sana Vijay Kumar. Sana Vijay Kumar is a Kannada novelist who has written a book called Kashir, which is based on Kashmir and the reality of Kashmir. And uh, she had an interaction in Pune last two weeks ago. And she said something that stayed with me for this long, and I want to end with that. She said, and we were talking, Sana and I were talking before uh, the event, and I had said we were talking naturally about the recent beheadings. And I had said that, uh, you know, it's uh, in Umesh Kole's case, particularly in Amravati, he was friends with the guy who betrayed him for 16 years, who he actually came for his funeral and cried also. So I was talking about that and she said, why are you surprised with it? Do they not keep goats in their homes before their festivals? Do they not treat them like their children? Do they not feed them? Do they not give them a lot of love? And then they slit the throat and watch it bleed slowly. So she said after that, hum bhi to bakre hi hai na. That one sentence stayed with me and I want to end with telling you that no, we are not goats. We are lions. And if you have forgotten that, it is time to remember that. And it is time to never ever forget that. Thank you. And I, now I request Dada to give his summing up address. Be before Dada does that, 30 seconds more. <laughs> because I, I cannot, I, I don't know, it's, it's maybe manufacturing defect or an aid that I, I, I cannot end without quoting some verses. So, uh, because Shefali talked about, uh, you know, friends, let, let me quote some verses so that you, you know what you're dealing with. Do not forget that disbelievers are allies of one another, 873. Do not make disbelievers guardians, 551. Do not marry the polytheists, i.e. Hindu women, unless they come to believe in Islam, 2221. And those who disbelieve in our verses, we will drive them into a fire, 456. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah and who do not adopt Islam. Fight them until they give the jizya while they are humbled, 929. Polytheists are the worst of creatures, 98.6. Those who deny the Quran, their necks will be shackled, 4070. No one has the right to be worshipped but Allah, 4062. And finally, do not take disbelievers as friends unless they convert and kill them if they refuse, 489. Thank you. It has been a very long session. Already it's eight. Uh, so I will sum up in a very short speech. First, my thoughts on the last question. Uh, yes, as a society, it is our civilizational duty to do many things, as suggested by uh, Anand and Sai. But, what I think is that within the framework of our constitution, what we can do, just like there was an anomaly as far as the federal nature of our state is concerned. So 370 was a dangerous doctrine because if Kashmir has a special status, Maharashtra will ask for it. So the whole federal structure was in danger of that doctrine. Other important thing which is also there in the constitution is UCC. So what we have to do, it's only a very small portion. All the criminal and civil law is same for everybody irrespective of the religion. But those personal laws, why they should go? We have to eliminate the religious identity in the civil society. In that sense, you can have your religion, but as far as the civil society is concerned, all are equal. Those laws are equal. I know there is a heated debate about it, 
But if you, we want to start integration of the society, so we have to take this major step. Another thing, this dangerous doctrine of minority status. It is affecting Hindu society in a very negative way. It is not only give, giving advantages, privileges and con concessions to minority which the mi majority doesn't have. Apart from that, because of the lure of that status or because of difficulty, like Ramakrishna Mission some years ago, they went to the court. They said, we are not Hindu. The Jains got the minority status. Now the Lingayats are demanding. So this is disintegrating the Hindu society. So we have to do what is most urgent. And that can be done through our parliament, through government. We have to raise an effective action plan. Today's conference was planned with this specific purpose that we will not remain in the problem mode. We should come up in a solution mode that specific, some kind of advocacy, some key things, if done properly, urgently and effectively, definitely there will be a sea change. There has been a change, no doubt about that. But we... Have, we are in the right direction, but we have to take the right speed. So that is more important. Another last point I would like to say, uh, an American author, Susan Doon, she has written a book about the American and the French Revolution. The name is Light and the Lightning. She has compared uh, both. Uh, the basic idea is that Revolutions are like lightning in the sky, spectacular. They are, are very attractive. You take French Revolution, such great values for which the revolution happened. But what was the outcome? Napoleon. The Russian Revolution, they wanted to create an equitable society. What was the outcome? Genius. The same. <laughs> In America, though there was no drastic revolutionary change, it was basically first for the white men, not also the women. But gradually that society, they had a stability and that through that stability grew a very strong nation. I think Susan Doon has not read about India. In 1947 and later in 1950, at one go, this nation became a nation of equal people. It's a great thing. It's a great thing to be proud about. We have survived. We were, I don't think in our history, our civilization was a civilization nation. Yes, there have been empires, but first time we are all in a very unique mode. This is a great experiment. And India can survive only through democracy. There is no other way we can survive. The last thing is, as uh, truth about what Ambedkar ji said that we are individuals, not a society. In Marathi, I always say, Amchi Gauki ek hai, Amcha project hai, Bhauki ek karna cha. That means ki we belong to a village. So that is a geographical unit. But Bhauki, that means we should be like a bandhu, as you said. But that bandhu bhao, how can that happen in a society which Ambedkar described is a very multi storied society, but there is no staircase. So basically, we have to build these bridges among ourselves where 
there is see there is there are differences many types of differences but no differences can become the basis of discrimination that should be the basic principle of building our society where we honor everybody if we can do that others who are trying to find fissures in us brahman brahmanetar savarna dalit so this kind of we have to challenge this but not only academically our own active social program our behavior in our individual life if we can change that i am a hopeful person we have come a very long way we have achieved much and therefore we should create an action plan and you are all participants we would like your inputs you can send them to shefali ji and definitely we will meet again thank you